Good morning and welcome to CN Jenkins. We're so excited to have you today and stay tuned as Pastor Cannon gives us an uplifting sermon that's going to help us in our everyday lives. If you want to stay involved on our YouTube channel, make sure you leave some comments, make sure you subscribe, and make sure you like our page. Hey, we're so happy to have you and welcome. Hope you enjoy. We're grateful for God's spirit that leads us into worship. Call your attention to verse 22 of this pericope as it serves as our background and our structure for our message this morning. For the Bible says, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. Will you read that with me, please? But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. Friends, with the aid of the Holy Spirit and your encouragement, I want to lift up this text. And for a brief moment this morning, I want to preach on our subject, staying committed to your habits. Staying committed to your habits. Church, I have discovered through research and just listening to folk that just because instructions are printed, that does not mean they are adhered to. Just because directions are given, that's no guarantee that they are followed. If I don't know if you are like me, when you see the beautiful picture on the box and you see how it looks or it could be put together, we don't rarely go to that black and white sheet of instructions. We just put it together. And we find out we got more screws and bolts at the end of the game than we started with. Somebody say amen. Let me see if I can say it this way, y'all. Just because you sit in a classroom, that does not make you an honor student. And just because you own a cookbook, that does definitely not make you a master chef. Somebody say, I know that's right. You see, it's not what you read that makes you smart. It's how you take what you read and apply it to a specific situation. Y'all, it's not what you know or how much you know. It's really what you do with what you have what makes, you, makes a difference on who you become. Let me see if I can illustrate to you this way the point that I'm trying to make a following instruction. It was October 2019 when a young man of 25 years old signed up for a 10-mile race outside of Minneapolis, Minneapolis. He was a runner. He was a conditioned runner of good health. This young man, y'all, he did something that most people, when they run, they don't do. They put their name on their bib, but this young man wrote on the bib with his number the words Jesus saves. He wrote Jesus saves on his bib because he wanted other people to know he was running, but Jesus saves. Now, y'all, about the eight mile mark of his run, this young man, 25 years old, in good health, he had what we call an irregular heartbeat, and for 10 seconds, his heart stopped beating. Of course, that put him in the cardiac arrest, and he had a heart heart attack right there on the streets of Minneapolis, y'all. And what was surprising about this, people usually don't survive a heart attack like that outside of the hospital. But this young man had a heart attack. But to his surprise, to his dismay, to his pleasure, and to God's glory, this young man by the name, y'all, of Tyler Moon, Tyler Moon, y'all, had somebody right behind him running a certified nurse was behind Tyler. Certified nurse, y'all, ran over, assessed the situation, and started doing CPR. Don't miss this, y'all. This certified nurse, I don't know if you call it ironically, or if you call it coincidentally, or if you want to call it providentially, but this certified nurse was right behind a Tyler Moon. The certified nurse's name, y'all, was Jesus Bruno. Okay. His name was Jesus Bruno, but we know it on the, on the English transition as what? Jesus. 
G now Bruno means well, okay? Bruno means uh, good. Bruno means uh, a, a, a kind and achievement. So in essence, this person who came behind Tyler Moon, y'all, Tyler's nameplate said Jesus saved. Jesus came behind. Okay, you not getting this. And he calls himself Jesse, but for by illustration, I guess to call him Jesus. Jesus well came behind Tyler, y'all, and started CPR. Jesus well, y'all, he I'm sure he could not help but to see Jesus saved on the you don't do CPR on somebody's back. You don't do CPR on somebody's leg. You don't do CPR, y'all, besides in the temples. You have to look at the chest. And on the chest of Tyler Moon, y'all, was Jesus saved. I'm sure that hey. Susan looked at that and said, why is this man wearing my name? Why does he have it all on him? Let me just pause right there and let somebody know, wherever you are, whatever you're going through, whatever you find yourself in, Jesus is right there. Whatever you may be coming through right now, God Almighty, God our Creator, God our Sustainer is right there for you. All you got to do is just write his name or call his name. Help me call his name right now. Jesus in my life, Jesus in my soul, Jesus in my heart, Jesus all over me, the name of Jesus. How precious is that name. The good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, y'all, is that God is always with us. God is always around us, and even in those moments when we don't see God in front of us, you can count on God having your back. Let's see if we can go to the text because I, I want you to understand, my friends, is that when James writes this text and James opens it up, he is giving us some instructions, y'all, on how we are to follow the work of God. Our passage today gives us a message in his writing. He is informing us that the word of God is central. Can you say word? East Coast, you see, the word is a lamp unto our feet. It is a lamp unto our path. James highlights two of the consequences in the passages when we don't apply the word in our lives. Verse 22, he says, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are fooling yourselves. James says, don't just let it come in one ear and go out the next. You got to apply the word to your life. Apply the word in your circumstance. Apply the word with everything you say and do. But now, let me give a footnote for you to understand how significant this message that James has given to this New Testament church. You see, we have to remember that James is writing this passage to a predominantly all culture. Okay, James is writing to folk, but he's given a message to people who, who receive it orally. So if they receive it orally, that means that what they are really taking in, what they know is only what they've heard. Okay, it's important for us to recognize that you have to be careful what you hear. Be careful what you hear and also what you pay attention to. All right, be careful what people will put into your spirit. Be careful how some people can occupy certain parts of your brain and you, by permission, give them permission to stay there. Be careful when you let certain things and certain words come around you. Come on, help me, under, help me preach now because I want you to say as far as I can see or say or do, as far as this day is concerned, I'm going to be careful about what I allow to come into my spirit. Spirit. Be careful when people who do not know the word try to tell you how to live your life and you're trying to live your life according to the word. You see, many people, y'all, they, they didn't read in James' time, and none of them had a Bible. But, but James is saying is that when you hear the word, when you listen to the word, you have to then apply the word. James, if he was writing in 2022, Dr. Monroe, he would probably broaden his audience and say, Don't, do, do not merely listen uh, uh, and read the word. James might say, y'all, do not merely uh, uh, podcast the word. Do not merely download the word. Do not uh, simply tweet the word. Don't simply just look at the word online. No, you've got to apply the word. 
it, it, it's not that James was against listening and reading, y'all, and studying and discussing and memorizing and meditating and podcasting and tweeting the word because, you know, in order for the Bible to get in us, we've got to what? Get into the Bible. But, but, but James is saying is that, that he's communicating that the word of God is, is not just something to be listened to. It's something to be obtained. And I, I want to speak that into somebody's life on this Sunday, on this Sabbath, as you watch, as you listen. That I don't want you just to say, I've got a big old Bible and I carry it around with me and I, I got some word with me. If you're going to apply that word, then all you're doing is carrying a book with you. J James was preaching, y'all, and he was teaching about committing the word into action. He was employing uh, those who were, who were going to follow the, the will of God to commit to doing the work of God. And before I go any farther, I got to talk about commitment. That's that C word, brothers. C word, sisters. C, C word, mama and dad, is that, 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 that C word, com commitment. What, what is commitment? As a noun, commitment, uh, y'all, it is an agreement or a pledge to do something in the future. My commitment is, is that I'm making a promise or a pledge so in the future when you look at me, I ought to look differently if I say I'm going to look different in the future. My commitment, if I commit to give something in the future, you shouldn't have to dial me up later on and worry about when it's coming through. <laughs> okay. Brother well, Grant, they didn't get it. The commitment is, is your signed seal approval that is going to be delivered. Commitment is dedication, it's belief, it's a willingness to get involved. I, I like the way Jim Rowan says it. Jim Rowan says that motivation is what gets you started. Commitment is what keeps you going. <laughs> Come here, Marcia Wilder. She says commitment leads to action. Actions bring your dreams closer. James, the brother of Jesus, y'all, is telling us in this passage, it, it is not just to hear the word of God, but he wants us to, 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 to apply the word of God, not just to hear that I got to treat folk right. I've got to really treat folk right. It, it's not just to hear God to give me a command, I've got to love you, but I've got to really love you, okay? Not just to hear God say, honor thy father and thy mother, but I've got to give respect to big mama and big daddy, I, okay? I was saying that in a loving way, because oftentimes we forget the big mamas of our lives and the big daddies of our lives who have gone without so we can have the little bit that we do have, and the Bible says when you honor your elders, when you honor those who have paved the way, your days should be long upon the earth. James gives us a, a word, y'all, about what I, what I want to use in, in, in lifting up my, my theme on preachings on habits, y'all. He, he is saying, and basically, that it's an application of, of life, and the applications are really going to be instrumental as we control, or shall we say, as we strive toward do, developing some good habits. We've been preaching on habits for the last four weeks. You remember the first one we started with uh, starting a new habit. That was the first sermon. Then getting into the habit. That was the second. And then when love becomes a habit, that was last week. And today we're talking about staying committed to your habit. And what is a habit? Again, a habit is, it is an acquired behavior pattern regularly followed until it has become almost involuntary. A habit, an acquired behavior, meaning that I don't have it now, but I've got to acquire it. I've got to grab it. I've, I've got to go get it. Okay, they didn't get it, Brother Herman. Let me say it like this. If, if you want a big, big screen TV to watch the all-star game today, if you want one, you got to go acquire one, okay? You just can't look at the ad in the paper and say, ooh, I want it. You got to go what? Okay, all right. If, 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 you, if you want to drive something other than your, than your current transportation, you can't just say, I want a car. You have to go what? Acquire a car. Okay, all right, all right. That, that, that's material. Let's go to personal. If you want a boo in your life, Want somebody to love you and you to love them. 
Because you are lonely, man. No purpose. No one, come on, Commodores. You know, you've got to go acquire somebody in your, okay? If you want faith in your life, you want the word in your life, you want God in your life, you got to do something to go acquire and get God to come. The Bible says, behold, I stand at the door and knock, but you and I must open the door, okay? It's not like when you go to the Walmart and you walk to the door, automatic the doors go open like this. No, no, no. That Jesus says the doors will open, but you do have to get out your car and come to that little gadget that makes the door go open. J James is telling us, y'all, is that, that, that you have to have the kinds of habits, habits, y'all, like reading the word daily, habits, y'all, like staying in your Bible, habits, y'all, like meditating on the insights of your reading, and habits, y'all, are like applying what you read. Habits, y'all, include learning to love people that you don't like. Habits of learning to go the extra mile when, when you feel like you've done all that you can do. Habits of learning to give in situations when some folk don't want to and can't say thank you. Habits learning to overcome when it seems like all hope is gone. You see, it's getting into the habit that I want to put into your brain, into your thinking processes, that you can develop some good habits, some strong habits, but it's going to take some work. Uh, and you've got to realize is that the consequences, or in the words of the late Sammy Davis Jr., he says, you always have two choices, your commitment versus your fear. What you're saying, what you're saying, I'm saying is that you have to have the habit that I'm going to stay committed to this task. I'm going to stay committed to this charge. I'm going to stay committed to do all that I possibly can do. What does the old hymn say? I'm going to stay on the battlefield until I die. I'm going to trust in the Lord until I die. I'm going to treat everybody right. You see, it's a habit that you have to put into your system. And I, and I cannot help but to just give God thanks for the habits that I observe here in this ministry, the habits that I'm grateful for, uh, Brother L, in this ministry, the habits that people want to get back into of coming back to in-person worship, the habit of you not counting it robbery to find yourself dressed up or dressed down or whatever it is, just got something on to worship on Sunday. Sunday morning. That's a good habit. You see, the main reason that we must be not just listeners to the word is, is because when you only listen, it is dangerous. When you only listen, you become a, a, a sponge of, of absorbing things. But you know, like any good sponge, unless you wring it out, you can't get any more in you. Okay, okay, let me see if I can illustrate this to you. It's important for us to not just listen, but to apply the word. I don't know if any of you have ever taken an online course as an auditor, or if you were, remember back in school, there were people auditing your class. It's, it's interesting how an auditor works in a class. Sister Kim, it's like this. If you audit a class, that means you get to listen to the lectures, you get to see the slides, you get to see the notes, you, you, you get to participate in all of the discussion, but you don't have to take a test. You don't have to write a paper. You don't even have to, have to participate in group. All you're doing is auditing. You just, audit, you just sit there and take it all in. Now, you don't have to do anything with it because you can ask questions, but there's no responsibility because you are auditing. Okay, you didn't get it. <laughs> Sister Edna, a lot of times when we look at our lives and how God is moving and how we want God to move more, is that the reason God is not moving in our lives because we've been auditing. <laughs> we've been taking it in. We've been reading our Bible. We've been studying. We've been listening to the notes and, and all like that. But when it comes to taking the test, I ain't got time for that. I... God, you must not be talking to me. You're talking about you. God, you want me, even though Reverend can talking about loving your neighbor as you love yourself. God, I can't stand them horseback riding the wall. I ain't loving them. 
God, you, you, you talking to somebody else. That, that wasn't for me. When you audit, that's what it means. James is saying if you just listen to the word and you receive the word, but you never apply the word, you, you, you are like a person that looks in the mirror and forgets what they look like. Let me, let me move quickly because I don't want you, to un want you to miss the point of James says you deceive yourself when you don't apply the word. The Bible is saying to us in this chapter is that in order to have a righteous life, you must rid yourself of all the sinful nature. You must get rid of all those thoughts and all those actions and all those things that are ungodly. Why? Because a righteous life is a life that's reflective of Christ. A righteous life is a life that, that does not have a spot or, or wrinkle. A righteous life. Now the point is, none of us on this side of the Jordan going to ever be righteous all by ourselves. But thanks be to God, we have an, 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 an intercessor. Thanks be to God, we have a, someone that comes in between our sin and our righteousness. Thanks be to God, we have a bridge called the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the thing that connects us and helps us live a righteous, right, righteous life. You have to realize that mirrors, y'all, mirrors, James is saying, should reflect who you are. And when you hear the word, the word is like you remembering to apply it. He's saying to us, y'all, is that we can't be like the man or the woman who looks in the mirror and forgets what they look like. See, see, the purpose of a mirror is to show the look of what they look like. Okay, that may not sound to be good English, but you get my point. You see, a looker looks in the mirror. And the mirror will tell the looker that you need to wash your face. A mirror will tell the looker that your head nappy. You need to comb your hair. A mirror will tell the looker that, 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 that you need some rest. All right? The mirror, however, will never wash your face, comb your hair, or make you get some rest. You've got to do something yourself. Oh, I'm preaching harder than you responding. You, you've got to help a preacher out on that one because I, I just want you to go home today and if you're home right now, put me on pause, go in the mirror and look and tell me what the mirror says. And if the mirror says you need to change, don't go back and say, mirror, that wasn't for me, that's for something. No, that was for you. You see, when we talk about our habits, y'all, we have to realize is that, is that, that, that belief and behavior go hand in hand. That's your tweet for the week right there. Say, belief and behavior go hand in hand. Oh, no, you just said it. You got to, you got to really feel it. Belief and behavior go hand in hand. Belief and behavior, they go hand in hand. Belief, you see, what I believe determines how I behave. And how I behave determines who I become. If I want to become a child of God, I've got to believe that I'm a child of God and behave like I'm a child of God. If I want to become prosperous, then I've got to believe that God will supply all of my needs. I've got to behave as though God has already done. If I want to say God can make a way out of no way, I've got to believe that God can make a way out of no way. I've got to behave like God can make a way out of no way. And I've got to now become that God has... Is there anybody here who would give God praise right there that I am not alone? I am believing like God can. I'm behaving like God can. And I'm what, what more than there, I'm becoming like God can. The good news, the good news, y'all, is that, again, it is habit-forming, habit-forming. Again, what, what are habits? Habit is the intersection of knowledge, skill, and desire. Habits, I've got to have knowledge of what I want to do. I've got to have the skill on what I'm going to do, and I've got to have the desire to fulfill it. Four components of a good habit, I'm going to give them to you, and we'll be out of here. Here it is. Understand the why, know the trigger, uh, reward the uh, reward the effort and enjoy the process. Just say those words in yellow with me. Say why trigger effort process. Understand your why. Understand your why. Your why. Begin with your why. That's so important. Not that my what, but my why. Why did I get up this morning? To praise the Lord. So guess what? It does not matter, Brother Grant, if you cut me off on Statesville Avenue and got in the parking lot before I did. I still got up to praise the Lord. 
My why, my why motivates me. My why continues to lift me up. What's my trigger? My trigger is when I think about the goodness of God. It feeds into my why. When I think about how God has made a way out of no way. When I think about that I'm not in this race by myself. What's my trigger? My trigger is to look around and see how God is blessing somebody else. What, what's, my, what's my effort? My effort is I'm going to get up and tell somebody about the Lord. I'm going to get up and tell somebody that he can make a way out. I'm going to get up and tell somebody if it had not been for the Lord on my side. But that, that's my effort. What's my process? My process, I'm doing it over and over and over and over and over. You can't beat God's giving. And I'm going to keep giving God glory over and over and over again. You see, when you have your why and you know your trigger and you understand your effort, you can appreciate the process. That's why the shout out goes to the former president of South Africa, um, Brother Nelson Mandela. Brother Mandela says, I am fundamentally optimistic. Part of being optimistic, he says, is keeping one's head pointed toward the sun, one's feet moving forward. Yeah. One's head pointed toward the sun and one's feet moving forward. Yeah. One's head pointed toward the sun. I will lift up my eyes into the hills. The winds covers my help. My help comes from the Lord. <laughs> Guide my feet, Lord. Direct my path, Lord. Whichever way you want me to go, Lord, I'm yours, Lord. My head is toward the sun. It does not matter what they say about me. My head is lifted up. It does not matter what they think about me. My head is still lifted up. I, I'm lifting up my head and my hands toward Almighty God. I, I got an optimistic outlook. I didn't see that you stabbed me in my back. I didn't see that you cut me off. I didn't see that you tried to demean me because my head was lifted up. You see, what, what Brother Nelson Mandela, he, he gives us something to live. If anybody want to help me and Brother Nelson Mandela this morning, just take some time and just look up. When I look up, I see your creation. When I look up, I see the stars. When I look up, I see your beauty. When I look up, I see your, when I look up, I get a glimpse of where I'm going to spend the rest of my life. I can't help but to look toward the heavens with covering my help. You see, Dr. Mandela, there were many dark moments in his life, many places where he could have given up. See, this was the president of, of the country. And normally when presidents are made, they go to Yale and not jail. Okay. He's on Robben Islands. He's locked up. He is sleeping on a mat. He's sleeping on, a, on the floor. They, he, he's a former boxer, y'all, so he's physical. But he's there, y'all, locked up because he was standing up for what was right. From jail to the president's office. From incarceration to freedom. From being told when to get up and when to sit down to now making laws or whosoever will let them come. See, the habits that Nelson Mandela learned, I got to quote this. He says, I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers that fear. <laughs> Successful people do consistently what other people do occasionally. Successful people reaching their habits. They do consistently what other people do occasionally. Let me give it to you quickly. The word of God is central. That's what James is saying. And I believe what James wants us to know is that without the word, you can't make it. But it's more important just to receive the word. You now have to apply the word. James gives us some three A's. I call it the triple A of his text. is acceptance, activity, and applications. Can you say that? Acceptance, activity, and application. What's the acceptance part? Let me give it to you quickly. He says, we must be quick to hear the word of God. Let everyone be quick to hear. James is suggesting, y'all, we must always be in a hurry to hear what God has to say. 
not in a hurry for you to talk, but be in a hurry for what God has to say. The, the first duty of a disciple, y'all, is we cannot do well in living the Christian life until we do well in hearing the word of God. You can't do well in living until you do well in listening. Number two, we must be slow to speak. Say, slow down. Okay, so and that's important. That's important because the Bible says is that he's suggesting that before we can say anything, we should listen before we say. He says we got to listen. Listening and thinking go together. It's hard for you to talk and listen at the same time. Okay, I know you're multi-talented. I know you're multi-gifted, but I'm going to say it to you as your pastor and friend. You can't do but one thing at a time. Quit fooling yourself saying I'm multitask. No, you are doing multiple things. You ain't doing one of them to your best, but do one thing at a time. Okay, that wasn't on the paper, but I just had to. <laughs> I'm preaching to myself right there. You can't do, do you can't do but one thing at a time. So, so, so you can't talk and listen at the same time. You have to be quick to listen. The reason we should be slow to speak is because slowness is the speech. And slowness of speech gives us thinking time. See, reckless talking is a dangerous thing for Christians. Reckless talking. You, you, you say something, then you wish you could take it back. But there are some things, come on, be, be truthful. Don't say amen too loud. Just pat your right foot if I'm on your street right now. There are some things in your life you wish you could take back. But ain't no way in heaven you're going to ever get them back. So instead of you having to pray, God, forgive me for what I said, just don't say nothing. So sometimes it's all right just to say hi and keep moving. I ain't going to talk now. You ain't got to talk to them. Just say hi and keep moving. The Bible says we must be slow to anger. Let everyone be slow to anger. Y'all, there are many Christians who are living on a slippery slope because they are so angry, so frustrated, so, so self-centered. They, 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 they find themselves, they, they, they stand at the moment getting ready to blow like a stick of dynamite. Don't you know that that is not of God? You better be glad I know Jesus. No, it's not that I be, you better be glad you know Jesus. That ain't nothing to brag about, that you about ready to lose your cool. That ain't nothing to talk about. Ooh, we almost lost it, Rev. No, no, no. Don't tell me. Tell God, God, I need more of you. The Bible says we must, we must prepare our hearts for the acceptance of the word of all. He says what? Putting aside all filthiness and all, remain, all, all remains of the wickedness. The Bible is saying you got to put aside those things that are not of God. Put down those situations that are not helpful. Get rid of the stinking thinking in your life and become more wholesome in your thinking and your belief and your actions. You have to have some activity about yourself. I said it before is that your relationships, your habits, your development is an ongoing process. You've got to understand it's not just putting the eggs in the bowl and the milk in the bowl and the flour in the bowl and the sugar in the bowl and the flavor in the bowl. Sister Doris, you got to cut that mixer on. Your life is about mixing and stirring and beginning to continue to go on and on and on. But here's the shout right here. It's the application. Application. I'm going to give them to you quickly. If you want the slides, just call the office. Let the AV team know. Here it is quickly. Four things. You got to five things. Set aside realistic goal. Make sure your goals are real. All right. Make sure your habits are real. Don't have a habit of, 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 of me playing in the NBA All-Star game. That ain't real. I mean, not even in the senior NBA All-Star game. That, you got to be realistic. Focus on your goals, not on your fears. To strategize and prioritize. Have a plan. Don't start the day without having a to-do list. Don't start the week without having a to-do list. Don't start the month without having a to-do list. Don't start the year without having a to-do list. And, and have some priorities. Understand what you can do and what God's going to have to do through you. Be accountable. Say, be accountable. So important, y'all. It's, it's not only what we do, but also what we do not do for which we are accountable. 
be a, have somebody who's going to ca ca carry your back and hold your back, but hold you accountable. The, the other thing, create a timeline. You will not be able to lose 30 pounds in three days. It ain't going to happen. That ain't realistic. Have yourself a time. You can't get out of debt in a year with taking you 20 years to get in debt. Have a realistic timeline. Here's the last one I got to celebrate with you. Have some rewards and celebrate. Too many of us, we get into our habits and trying to do certain things. Reverend, you know, for Lent, I'm going to give up chocolate. And on Easter, what do you do? You go out and get the biggest chocolate bunny you can find. That's not a reward. That's a relapse. <laughs> I don't give up fried food. No, oh, don't give up fried food. If you like fried food, get you some fried food. Now, if fried food's bad for you, you might need to find something else. But, but give yourself something realistic. You see, James Clear says it like this. You don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. Here's my close. In January of 2022, there was a trial, trial, uh, an Olympic skating trial uh, in, in Colorado. In Colorado, this trial trial, one of the races was a 500 meter event of speed skating and the, and the person who was the best in the world at speed skating, y'all, was Erin Jackson. Erin Jackson, y'all, she was running this race or skating this race, y'all, but Erin slipped and fell. When she slipped and fell, y'all, her teammate Brittany Bow won first place. As a first place winner that qualified her to go to the Olympics, by going to the Olympics in this 500 meter race race, that meant also that Aaron was not able to go because she came in third place. But here's how God in that system worked. The system to which Brittany was under said that my teammate, who is the best in the world, had an accident. She slipped and fell, but because she slipped and fell, if she had not slipped, she would have won the race. I'm only the winner because somebody else slipped. Okay, I know I can preach that all day long. You have what you have, not because of your good looks and your hook up, but sometimes you have what you have because somebody slipped. Can you say slip? Somebody slipped in their responsibility. They slipped in their achievement. They slipped in their doing. They slipped in showing up. And you happen to be that person. Here is the shout, y'all, because Brittany recognized that this, my teammate, was the best, best on the ice at that time. I'm now going to give up my place on the Olympics to run in that 500-meter race, and I'm going to give it to Aaron. Okay, she gave it to Aaron, y'all. And on February the 13th, 2022, Aaron Jackson became the first African-American woman, y'all, to win a gold medal in speed skating. Aaron Jackson, y'all, from Florida, a black woman from Florida winning on the ice. Okay, you didn't get it. Don't ever let other people tell you what you can't do from where you come from. You and God are able to do all things. You and God are able to do exceedingly. You and God are able to do exceptional things. Aaron, y'all, winning this gold medal teaches us is that God, given her good habits and a good practice, can do any if she just doesn't give up. Now, the shout for me, y'all, is that after Aaron won her medal, don't you know that God's turned around and gave Brittany a medal as well. Don't you know that Brittany is the world champion, shall we say, in the speed of that 1,000 at 1,500 meter race? Now, this is what God does with a system. God blesses not just you, but when you're faithful to God, God blesses your neighbor. When God blesses your neighbor, God blesses you, your neighbor, and your neighborhood. When God blesses you, your neighbor, and your neighborhood, God blesses your community. When God blesses you, your neighbor, your neighborhood, and your community, God blesses where you reside. When God blesses you, your neighbor, your community, your neighborhood, and where you reside, God blesses all of those where you see. What did God tell Joshua? Wherever you look, wherever you step, I'm going to be with you. I got to give God thanks right there because I need some folk today to be committed to your habit because your habit is going to bless somebody. Just be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. Whatever 
whatever I'm in, God's going to do a great work. Whatever I'm doing, God's going to give me the power. Whatever that I say to God, I want to do this to your glory. God's going to help me be successful, but not just me. God's going to bless you to be a blessing to somebody else. Come on, stand to your feet. Give God praise right there because God is not through. God is doing greater things. God is doing more powerful things. You just doesn't have to stay committed to the word of Almighty God. Welcome back. First, we'd like to thank you for tuning in today. Prayerfully, Pastor's message touched you in a special way and gets you ready for a new week. If you would like to stay connected to us, we have prayer as well as Bible study throughout the week. Make sure you check the website for more information. Also, if you would like to join the church and become a member of our family, contact us and we'll be more than happy to help you. Also, if you would like to donate, visit our website for all the different ways to give. Again, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, and God bless.